We're not here to talk about Africa rising or Africa falling. Or how Africa is not a country. Or about how solar sanitary pads will save us all. Because <laughs> that'll definitely be a thing. <laughs> We're not here to talk about any of those things because these are topics that have already been covered and things that we and the West should already know by now. But what Except we... for maybe the solar sanitary <laughs> pad part. <laughs> true. Very, very true. But what we are here to talk about today is community and new media. So, how did we get started? So, as you can see on the screen, a really common thing to wake up into in the morning, 403 unread WhatsApp messages from your various group chats, your DMs. If you're from Nairobi, you'll definitely know what I'm talking about. And so, a common thread through many of our conversations were very simple and similar, about being diaspora, about being reaspora, in our case, being diaspora twice over. But we didn't see these themes reflected in media. For example, young women across the continent building great things for themselves, but with little recognition. The collision of higher Western education with building a career on the African continent? Or dating. Have you tried Tinder in Nairobi? Anyone? Show of hands? Yeah, maybe. I bet you went to Java on that first date. <laughs> maybe you did. Probably. Or being really competent in two different worlds, but being very confused about which one you belong to. Or having African parents and very, very high expectations. And so, our girl child was born, and it was called The Africana Podcast. The, far, the men on the far right and far left of this photo are our fathers. And alongside our very shy mothers, um, Oral storytelling has always been a big part of our upbringing, including the very factual tale of walking in the snow, uphill, both ways, to school, in the Sahara Desert, in the pouring rain, with no shoes. <laughs> It's not lost on us that we've made the exact opposite journey as our parents, but with shoes and hashtags. <laughs> but now it's our turn to share our stories. And so, yes, Africa is not a country, but we are, by and large, known for our truth-telling. Sometimes the truth-telling can be a bit too harsh, though. <laughs> and we couldn't have started a podcast without being true to ourselves and to our humor. Exhibit A. <laughs> Comedy podcasting, it's powerful, it's liberating, and it's also a great accompaniment to Nairobi traffic. And audio as a medium allows us to be very honest with ourselves and with our listeners. We chose audio as a medium because it was the most accessible for us as independent producers. But it also turned out to be the most accessible for our listeners, which, oddly enough, according to Facebook analytics, are Ethiopian men from the ages of 18 to 24. <laughs> Who knew? Our podcast, in its truest form, is a conversation amongst friends. Uh, we record it on our phones, sitting on our couch, while drinking chai. Audio as a medium is very intimate, and our listeners include us in a variety of their daily routines, cooking, cleaning, driving, etc. And it breeds familiarity. And we pride ourselves on building a platform that features young creatives, community builders, and catalysts. And so far, we've interviewed a few. Most recently, Waniri Kahiu, a TED fellow, who's a noted sci-fi filmmaker and author, and Nanjira Sambuli, who's a tech community builder extraordinaire. We end each episode of the Africana podcast with an Africana proverb of the week. Uh, normally, it's kind of a jumble of repurposed rap lyrics. But for today, we'll try something a little bit different. So here is the proverb for the TED audience. And it goes like this. If your Uber gets into three accidents on the way to TED, it's best to use that time to practice. True story. <laughs> that did happen. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Asante. <laughs>